What is up, most distinguished patrons of this channel? Today, we are going to tackle a question that Weld.com proposed on their Facebook group dealing with polarity. So that's what we're going to talk about. Let's get into it. So we're here down in the bowels of the tin shed, and apologize for the mess. Another day I'll clean it up in like a year or two. Anyways, Weld.com posted a message on their Facebook group. I'll put a picture of it up right now. And dealing with polarity and to explain it, etc. And they wanted viewer input. Now, I thought about responding to it and spending 45 minutes writing a post that will help simply explain what's going on. But I thought, well, why not just shoot a video and share it with everyone else? Because I know a lot of you probably don't watch Facebook uh, or go on Weld.com's Facebook group so it would reach more people. Anyways, when I was reading the comments on what they had posted, I realized a vast majority of people don't understand what's actually going on with polarity. And by doing a video covering this, it will actually help explain to a lot of you out there what's actually going on in a way that you understand. And no, I don't think you're stupid. I just realized because I myself did not really understand polarity and welding because it seemed to be opposite of what you would expect. And there's good reasons for that. So we're going to cover all of that to where hopefully by the end of this video, you understand far more than you do now. So to start things off, Obviously, with every welder, this big old clunker here, the ESOB up there, my dynasty, any welder that's electrically, so no smarty, oxyacetylene doesn't work with polarity, okay? I already see that coming in the comments. But anyways, any electrical arc process all uses polarity, and as you probably know, polarity matters hugely because if you weld with the wrong polarity, your results are terrible, for example. With MIG welding, if you weld on DCEN, so the MIG gun is negative, you're going to produce a zero penetration ropey bead versus DCEP. Your gun is positive, you're going to produce flat, wetted out welds the way that you want. With stick, the same thing holds true to a certain extent. Uh, if you weld on DCEN, you're going to produce a low penetration bead however it can work in certain circumstances now if you've been around wire processes enough to run self-shielded flux core you'd realize that runs on dcen not ep however dual shield wire welds on ep electropositive so there's all these different polarities for different processes and it matters and oh i almost forgot tig is dcen to understand why that is, we need to understand the difference between electron theory and conventional current. So let's go over to the welding table and do a little bit of book learning about that. So in school here in America, and I would imagine in most countries, we are taught that electricity flows from positive to negative. Now on this blown up battery that's full of acid, that's the positive it appears, this is negative. So we're taught that Power comes out of here, returns to the negative. That is known as conventional current. That goes all the way back a very long time ago when a decision was made as to what to call the terminals, meaning positive and negative, those are the names that were came up, and what side is theoretically the hot side. The problem is, is that this works great for 12 volt systems and for simple circuits. However, that does not adequately explain what is actually going on with welding, and we'll get into why that is. But first, let me draw a little diagram with a simple circuit and a 12-volt car battery. So here we have, obviously not drawn to scale, a 12-volt car battery like what I have over here, and a simple light bulb with a single filament. This is an incandescent bulb. It's not some fancy LED bulb. So what we have in conventional current is that from the positive side, it basically goes through the filament. And remember, this is DC power. Through the filament, returns back to the battery. The resistance in this wire, which is likely tungsten, heats the wire up and produces light. Okay, very simple circuit. This circuit does not matter 
what side of the terminal you hook what side of the filament. It simply doesn't matter. This is more or less a resistor. Doesn't matter. Even on more complicated circuits, and let me draw one of those now. On this slightly more complex diagram, we have a switch, we have a relay, and we have a window motor. A little bit more complicated than just hooking a light bulb to a battery and watching it glow. So the switch is either off or on. The relay has a trigger wire, which another power source will engage or disengage, and that will allow the relay to pass power. And then we have a simple DC window motor. Now, conventional current dictates that power flows from positive to negative. That's what we were all taught in school. So power, in theory, goes this way back to the negative. When you look at this, you realize something pretty quickly, and that is this would operate in both directions. So our polarity could be flipped, and the circuit could be completed without a problem either way. The difference is the window motor, depending on what the polarity is, will spin in one direction. If you reverse the polarity, it will spin in the opposite direction. So under those circumstances, we do have a change here, but for all practical purposes, this circuit will work regardless of polarity. When electrical engineers design circuits, be a simple circuit like this or something more advanced, as long as they and everyone else that are doing the designing of that circuitry, if there are more people, are on the same page, it really doesn't matter for most things with DC what your polarity is. Okay, If one person is using conventional current wisdom and another person is using what's called electron theory, and I'll get more into that shortly, what will happen is you'll have one person design all of this assuming the window motor needs to spin this direction and then one guy designing it assuming the other and then when you get it all completed odds are this window motor is not going to operate the way that the person who designed it expected it to so now you got a problem. So the most important thing is that everyone designing a circuit are all on the same page as to what theory you're using which again is most commonly conventional current that people use in this country unless you're an electrical engineer. So let's talk a little bit about the difference between conventional current and electron theory. Conventional current, which again is positive to negative, is technically incorrect because electrons actually are negatively charged particles and they flow from negative to positive. So electron flow is technically more correct. However, for most circuits, like I said, it simply does not matter. And the reason is as long as the flow of electrons is present, the device or whatever you need the power for uh, will work properly. The caveat to that is, like I mentioned earlier, if there's components that only allow uh, electrons to flow in one direction through them, or multiple people are making different assumptions as to the direction of flow, it can be a problem because current can get stopped within a electrical device before it makes a complete circuit. But for all practical purposes, it really doesn't matter other than like in electric motors where you can reverse the direction. But again, for simple circuits and even some more advanced circuits, it doesn't matter. Now, electron flow matters heavily in welding because you're dealing with an electric arc and an electric arc when you're using that to melt steel and wire etc the differences in polarity cause different effects to that arc as well as to the wire or rod and that will change how it welds because again in welding we're not dealing with a simple circuit we're using electricity for a completely different purpose so now let's look at the effect that plays. To help understand this better, we're going to look at the TIG process. And if you're unfamiliar with TIG welding, effectively all we have is an electrode, which in the case of TIG is a tungsten, and it passes electricity into a workpiece, and that electricity or that electric arc creates heat, and it melts your metal. Very simple, and it's also very easy to see when you're doing the process of what's going on because there's not smoke and sparks obscuring your view. So anyways, on DC electrode positive, where the tungsten is positive, 
the electrons collect on the workpiece, so your steel or your material, and then jump through the arc gap into the tungsten. So more or less it collects and it's emitted from the work into the tungsten. Wherever the electron strikes is where the heat input is more significant would be a way to put it. So when you have all these electrons scattered through the piece and they jump to here, there's going to be a tremendous amount of heat when they smack into this tungsten. And that is why tungsten will not hold up under DCEP. 100% electrode positive will just melt the tungsten. It cannot handle the heat, which is in direct contrast to DCEN. Electrode negative more or less the tungsten collects electrons down near the tip and they jump through the arc into the workpiece. The fact that those electrons are striking your base material and that impact force puts a lot of heat here rather than a tungsten. And that is why on electrode negative, the tungsten is able to handle significantly higher amperage than on EP and not melt is because the heat of the impacting of the electrons is down here. Now the polarity has far more effect than just that. On electrode positive you have a much wider arc cone because you more or less have a flat area or a section of steel where at any point electrons can jump onto the tip of the tungsten. Typically, especially in the case of aluminum, the electrons will only jump in an area that is shielded by gas. So in the case of TIG of argon. So the wider your argon shielding, the wider your area of jumping of the electrons. Now, the downside to that is, well, your arc cone is significantly wider. If you're trying to melt this much metal versus this much metal, it takes a lot more amperage to melt this and your weld bead is going to be wider. That is why on AC welding, which is a mixture of both electrode negative and positive, like with aluminum with TIG, you have a very wide bead. That is simply because of the fact you're running electrode positive. In direct contrast, electrode negative, because you have such a fine point that all the electrons must jump from, it produces a very narrow neck down weld and a very, very narrow arc cone. The same can be held true for stick and with MIG, which we will get into that in a second. In under conventional wisdom, DCEP, well, if the electrode's positive, then the current and the electrons would be flowing from the tip to the work, and that's simply not the case. Because again, electrons jump from negative, which this is negatively charged, to the positive tungsten. And if you have any experience with TIG welding, you would notice and know this to be true because you can see it in the arc. Let's look at stick and MIG. So stick welding operates on DCEP electrode positive, just like your typical gas shielded MIG also runs DCEP. Now in the case of TIG, like I mentioned, if you ran EP, you would consume your tungsten and it would melt because it can't handle the heat and it's not meant to be consumed. Well, with stick welding, where you have an inner wire core, electrode positive doesn't matter because that wire rod is consumed anyways as part of the welding process. So the fact that you're inputting massive amounts of heat due to that impacting of the electrons from your plate to the tip doesn't matter. Now there's actually some benefit to running EP. The first one being that the act of the electrons jumping from the base material to the tip will actually help break down the surface oxide on the material. If you've ever TIG welded aluminum, you know for a fact that those electrons actually strip off the oxide layer on the aluminum, which makes welding clean welds on aluminum possible and fairly easy. Well, it actually does the same effect on steel, believe it or not. It does strip some of the surface contaminants. The second thing it does, that impact force on the tip of the rod on stick welding gets that rod super hot. And you guys got to remember, 
with stick welding, you're running an eighth inch 3.2 millimeter rod or a 332nd rod very typically, and that is a very big wire. And by running EP gets that wire tip really hot and more or less balls of metal will jump across onto the plate and due to surface tension, much like two water drops getting close to one another and joining, that molten metal from the rod tip hitting that molten pool on the metal will join it and you'll have metal deposition. So the hotter that you can get that rod tip, the better because you get, well, bigger balls and more droplets of molten metal, which is good. But if it was cool, like if you ran DCEN with stick welding, the tip of the rod will be cold and you'll be more prone to more or less just having an arc across and not molten metal melting off of the rod tip. So in a lot of effects, you have to run EP to get stick to weld properly. Now with EP, you produce a wider arc cone. It is not as focused as on EN. To a certain extent, arc blow with stick is a bigger issue because you're running electrode positive. If you were to run electrode negative, you would have a much narrower arc cone and it would be less likely to get arc blow because arc blow, say an electron or a bunch of them over here wanted to jump over here and it could, and they decided to, well, guess what? Your arc will now wander to there. So you get a lot more arc wandering, I think, on electrode positive than you would on negative. And interestingly enough, you actually can stick weld on electrode negative. What you would find is a quieter arc Typically, no matter how much amperage you run, the profile, so I'll draw two, two welds here. This would be like your typical 7018 weld. It's somewhat, not ropey, but it's got a concaveness to it and some reinforcement. Well, if you were to weld on electrode negative, your weld bead would tend to rope up significantly due to the fact that your arc will actually be narrower. And for the most part, it's undesirable. In certain cases, like with 6013 welding sheet metal, running electrode negative with stick can be a benefit because it's far less likely to blow a hole through the material immediately. Again, the downside is the tip of the rod isn't going to get very hot, and running like an eighth inch rod on an electrode negative, your deposition rate will likely go down and you're more or less gonna have more arc and less metal. That's not really desirable, except in very specific circumstances. So now with MIG, which is done electrode positive universally, uh, the same effect with stick happens where you're putting a massive amount of heat into that wire. When you get into super high voltage and gas mixtures for spray arc, that gets the wire so hot that it literally turns to liquid before it even transfers over. The standard short circuit process, the wire is a solid until it stabs that molten pool and blows apart. So spray, it's a liquid as it crosses. If you were to weld MIG DCEN, what would end up happening is your weld would more or less just rope completely up and no matter what your settings, it would just basically keep putting more and more metal higher and higher and it wouldn't wet out. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that with MIG, you don't run a very big rod, your 035, 030 wire, but you're running very high wire feed speed. And that's the difference is that you're substituting diameter for volume and you still deposit very big welds, much like with stick, you're just feeding a lot more wire. So the issue is electrode negative, you're feeding so much wire that and it's cold more or less that you're not gonna get huge penetration due to the volume, you're just gonna stack it on top of itself. Now, the interesting thing is self-shielded flux core wire runs DCEN just like TIG. And I think there's a couple reasons for that. So flux core wire is a very small hollow tube. The metal exists on the tube on the outside and the inside is filled with flux. Well, with self-shielded flux core, you don't typically run super high wire feed. You run fairly high voltage for that wire feed speed. And ultimately, 
even though the electrons are more or less, say this is flux core, they're collecting on the wire and passing through, but there's so little mass and the electric arc is strong enough that it doesn't really, the wire doesn't stab the puddle like it does with MIG. It's more or less like a liquid before it crosses over. So the fact that you're running electrode negative isn't really a huge detriment to that process because you're more or less in a way spraying material across and not a whole lot of it at that due to the hollow core of the wire. Another thing you got to remember with the flux core gasless wire is that wire is a hollow tube and it cannot handle very much current. If you were to weld it on electrode positive, the electron smack in that wire would probably cause the wire to blow up before you wanted it to and would just create massive amounts of spatter, which is undesirable, obviously. With dual shield, where you're running a flux cord wire and shielding gas, that is not an issue because you actually run that on EP. I think the reason it's not an issue is twofold. One, I believe the wall thickness on dual shield is probably a little bit thicker than self-shielded. Self-shielded needs a lot of flux inside in order to produce shielding gas and protect the weld. Well, dual shield, because you're using a separate shielding gas, you could probably use a thicker wall wire with less flux inside. So that's part of it. It can handle more current because of that. And the second reason is you run that product at extremely high wire feed speeds generally. And that extra wire prevents that wire from blowing apart and just having an arc existing between a contact tip and the work. So that is likely why uh, flux core self-shielded you have to run on EN and yet dual shield is run EP just like stick and MIG. Well, let's move on. So with everything you learned so far fresh in your mind, let's look at some welding specific terms and why you might have been confused on them. So in welding, they often call DCEN straight polarity and DCEP reverse polarity. And I know when I learned to weld in school, that confused me as it did others. And I didn't really get any kind of adequate explanation as to what was going on. But after understanding what I showed you in this video so far, it kind of makes sense. And let me explain. When they say straight polarity, they're using electron theory in relation to this. And DCEN, where your electrode is negative, Electrons move from negative to positive, so it's straight polarity because of that. Whatever, if it's your flux core gun or your TIG torch, the tungsten, it's moving straight from your electrode to the work. DCEP, electrode positive, is reverse polarity because electrons are not collecting on your wire in the case of, say, MIG or your stick electrode tip but they're more or less coming from the base metal to your electrode. So that is why it's reverse. If it was conventional current, these would be the exact opposite. And that was so confusing to me because when I went to welding school a long time ago, I was under the impression that conventional current was correct and I didn't understand electron theory and it, for the most part, it didn't matter, but welding it does. And that is why in welding, they use terms under the premise of electron theory and not conventional current. And if you have any experience with TIG welding, because in TIG you just have an electric arc and you don't have gas and hot metal spraying everywhere to obscure the arc, this makes total sense. On DCEN straight polarity, the arc is very focused and the tungsten doesn't get very hot. On reverse polarity, the tungsten smokes itself and melts within seconds and the current or the electrons are coming from the workpiece in a very wide arc cone. So this makes total sense, but obviously under conventional current, which you are probably more familiar with, this would be opposite of what you would expect because if current flows from positive to negative, then why would this be straight polarity? Because this is negative on the electrode and hopefully you understand all of that. It's electron theory and the flow of electrons that they're referring to. All right, let's go to conclusion.
So what did we learn today? Well, hopefully you learned a little bit more about the polarity and how it affects welding in general, and you understand a little bit more about electrons too, hopefully anyways. Now, if you wanna do some fun experiments on your own to see some of this, take your standard MIG process, which is done DCEP, and switch it to DCEN and try and run a weld. You will be successful in running a weld. It's gonna sound a lot different, and the finished result is gonna be a high ropey bead with virtually no penetration. No matter what your settings are, it's gonna to wanna to stack metal on top of itself rather than wetting out. So that's pretty fun. Now with TIG, you can run DCEP as well. It's, <laughs> the results are a little bit less fun. It's gonna involve grinding your tungsten, but when you strike an arc and run a weld, or at least attempt to do a weld, that tungsten can't handle the heat that those electrons are imparting in there by striking the tungsten, and you're gonna end up melting and balling up that tungsten. Which, by the way, if you do a lot of aluminum welding, it wouldn't hurt to ball your tungsten with a mini ball on AC, because it will help stabilize the arc, I find, at higher amperages. So you can do that. Now with stick welding, hopefully yours is attached to a machine, not like this, but with stick welding, if you run DCEN, you'll find that you will drop penetration typically and you will make a high ropey bead profile, much like MIG. So all things you can give a shot, get try it, and you're gonna learn a lot firsthand about polarity. But it goes without saying you got to have the right polarity for a process to work. And I think the reasons as to why that's the case were explained pretty well in this video. As always, if you have a question or comment or thought on this, feel free to leave them you know where to. Otherwise, until next time.